Today on Real Life, King Family Recipes with civil rights activist and evangelist Dr. Alveda King, plus the moving and inspirational music of Eric Genus. And on Real Life Coaching, a journey of prayer, 40 days through the prayers of Jesus with author Tim Cameron. That's today on Real Life. This is real life. God loves you. Jesus died for you. The Holy Spirit, he empowers you. And the Bible is your and my guide to abundant life. I'm your host, Don Block. I'm here with my uh, very, very talented wife, Terry, along with the anointed and talented pastor, J. Anthony pastor Gilbert Jay. in the house. Yeah, we're Good glad you're here. here. Glad you're Monday. Monday crew. That's right. And you know, middle of the month, mm. it is. It's yeah. coming close, Almost my favorite holiday. Terry's just inching her way to Thanksgiving. She I know, I love it. Just inching her way. I love it, even though people have been telling me they've been watching the Hallmark Channel every day, and guess what's on there? <laughs> Christmas. I know, it's been inundated with Christmas know, stuff everywhere. I know, I like, know. Wow. I know, I, they were saying, well, they did have, they have like five Thanksgiving movies. Come on, it's all, <laughs> it's, it's Thanksgiving time. Now, why do you like Thanksgiving so much, Terry? So it's your favorite holiday. Right. Why? How come? I, I guess I feel it's not commercial, and the focus is on being with family or friends, and it's to take that time to set aside and just be thankful. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. it, the, the holiday says it all, you know, to be thankful and, you know, and to just appreciate all of, the, all of your, our many blessings, you know. Um, I just, and that's what I love about it. I love the Thanksgiving. I like the turkey. I like the fresh cranberry sauce. I love. <laughs> do you like to cook? Um, I love I see Thanksgiving. You got a little, to cook. Uh, I do. She's, I, I'm Look wondering what. I'm wondering what the apron are you? What, what what's the apron about? I have the privilege and honor to be cooking. I'm going to be Gigi's. <laughs> Alveda King, that's her name, gorgeous grandma. <laughs> she has a recipe book coming out, and we are going to cook together. So you and Alveda, Dr. Alveda King are in the kitchen today. We are. We are. I am going to be her apprentice. All oh, right. the apprentice. Well, ho. Mm. I don't want to be fired, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat what we cook. You know? <laughs> well, uh, I, think, I think you're going to have the opportunity. To, well, I think, Pastor Jay, you and I are going to get an opportunity to taste oh, what they're cooking. Taste What's and see. cooking? What the rock is cooking? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what, what, what did you say, Gigi? Yeah. Gigi. Gorgeous grandma's? Gorgeous. Yeah, George's what, grandma. What, what, what Gigi's Gigi. cooking? Hey, I like that George's name. George's or gorgeous? Gorgeous. Gorgeous, okay. You know? Could gorgeous be George's, too. Right? George's gorgeous grandma. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're so glad you've tuned in and uh, watching this program. Joined us. Some of you guys watch us all the time. Hello. We, mm -hmm. we give you greetings and love. Some of you are brand new to the real life uh, viewers. We want you to be part of our family. So we welcome you to the, to the program. What this program is all about, we come every day and our goal is to provide answers, real answers, for real life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because life has its questions, brother. It, sure does. it does. There's things that pop up. We need answers for life. And that's mm -hmm. what's so great about this program because you're always going to get something straight out of heaven delivered to your living room or wherever you are that's going to minister right to your situation. Absolutely. Well, this program's theme is prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, and I, I, Terry, I think prayer is one of the misunder, most misunderstood spiritual principles in, 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 in in Christianity, what is prayer? How do mm -hmm. how does prayer get get connected? What is it about? It's so confusing, and it's That's hard. Right. It's That's hard right. for us. You got to learn how to pray. Absolutely, Amen. and and it is it is a, a, a misconception of what prayer is. I mean, it, it is talking to God, but you know, um, you're going to be blessed today. So you have to turn in some of the great insight he has. Is that in prayer time? Guess what? We learn more about who God is, and so that's really the essence of our intimate relationship with Christ is knowing who He is, and it happens through prayer. And that's in our coaching. Mm -hmm. Our coach is coming up in just a few minutes, so you don't want to go anywhere. A phenomenal teacher on prayer, Tim Cameron, yes, yes. he's got a truth that he's going to share with us. I promise you, 
that it will set you free. Amen. It'll set you free. I promise you that. Well, now, if, like I say, if you joined us for the first time, if you're new to the to the family, we we again welcome you. We're glad you're here. We have a newsletter that we send out for free. Get it into your life. Put it into your family. Get to see kind of behind the scenes. I do some writing for the newsletter. Terry does some writing for the newsletter, and uh, the schedules there and all kinds of stuff. This is how you get it. I was diagnosed with boring mail. I just hated getting my mail because all I got were bills. I felt so bored and disconnected. One day, I called for the Cornerstone Real Life Newsletter. Now, I can't wait to go to my mailbox. Side effects of the Real Life Newsletter may include a closer walk with God, daily encouragement, information about Cornerstone Network special guests, and more. Call today for the Real Life Newsletter. It'll change your life. Alveda King is an evangelist and a civil rights activist, but she also loves cooking. She's here with some recipes from her new cookbook, Gigi's Home for the Holiday. Alveda, welcome back to Real Life. Hi, Terry. Hey. And, you know, I heard everything you said about you can probably make the fresh cranberry sauce and all that and the turkey and everything. I do. So you would love to cook too. So you're not my sous chef, you're my co chef. Oh, thank you. All right. You made my day, but I really think I'm just the Sue. But here we go. Now, tell us about what prompted you to do a cookbook. Well, actually, in the civil rights movement mm -hmm. of the previous century, when we were fighting and marching and doing all of that, hospitality, Sunday suppers, which I talk about in the book as well, all of that was very important. My dad, A.D. King, and my mother, Naomi King, great cooks, okay. and that passed down through the family. But every branch of our family has wonderful recipes. Mm. And so we share Sunday suppers and the civil rights experience. Okay. What was Martin Luther King Jr.'s favorite food? You'll have to get the cookbook to find out. Oh, Okay. But all of that, yeah. <laughs> well, in your cookbook, do you cover all the different seasons as well? We absolutely do. Sunday supper is a focus. Christmas and Thanksgiving are. Mm -hmm. But uh, grilling is real big in our family, okay. too. So in the summertime with the uh, patriotic holidays and all of that, so there's great grill tips and just mm -hmm. all types of tips. Well, in your cookbook, Tell me, it's just not about reading. There's something, there's a special feature on it. Can you explain that a little bit too? The cookbook is interactive yes. and you can look for QR codes, pick up your phone and scan the QR codes and come up with recipes. You'll see my mother cooking, my brother, my granddaughters. You'll see me with my blender and yeah. all of that. Interactive. So that's amazing. So we can actually use our phone Download. Scan the QR code, right, and the video will pop up. On how and, to make and, that recipe. And it, right now it's an ebook, but the print edition you can also scratch and sniff. Scratch and sniff. In the print edition. Oh my goodness! I, well, let's take a look, shall we? There's a table in the dining room, in the formal dining room, where we have our elders and some of the pastors and everyone. My mother, Naomi King, my aunt, Christine King Farris, our founding first lady of my home church, Belize's Bible Christian Church. Uh, her husband, my pastor, went home to be with the Lord last year. The table is absolutely beautiful. I tell you, Audrey does a wonderful job setting up. It's just absolutely lovely. That is awesome. That's home for the holidays. That's at my house, and we're cooking and having music, and Audrey, uh, my daughter's mother-in-law, sits the table. It's just a really big deal. Oh, my gosh. It's like I'm part of your family. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, and it's better because I get to also make the recipes that your family gets to enjoy. And this is one of them. Can you tell us what we're going to be making today? This is one of my favorite desserts, but okay. it's very easy. It's called a trifle Good. or a punch bowl cake because okay, you make right. it in a punch bowl. And then we'll serve it up in these goblets in a few minutes. Okay. And so you layer it, depending on the season. For Christmas, strawberries look so pretty, and the blueberries and the bananas and everything. Okay. In the summer, the peaches and the mangoes, and so all of that. So you begin with a blender. Okay. Okay, let's wait, go. Wait, here, Ooh, do you need, top. Oh, we need the top on it, huh? <laughs> I, I knew you knew what you did. 
And that's just mixing strawberries, strawberries and, a little and water. water. Okay. And so what you do, you don't want it to be dry. And so what what oops, dry? Oh, the, the cake, cake? The, the whole recipe because the fruit and the creme fraiche is very rich. So you're just So you just pour, pour a little of that okay. liquid base on the bottom. So you're pouring a little of the strawberry mixture on the bottom. Okay, on the bottom. Or any fruit, we're just doing strawberries today. Okay. And then you come in with your pound cake. All you're right. coming in next to with the bananas, but we're going to do creme fraiche first. Okay. Now tell me, what is creme fraiche? I, I told you I never heard of it until you said something today about Creme fraiche it. is a little richer than uh, cream, uh, well, whipped cream. Whipped cream, And watch, okay. I mean, you can see this. Uh, look, it, audience, everybody look. Okay. Whipped cream will not fall off of a spoon like that. Creme no. fraiche is more smooth and richer. You can add more sugar, almond flavor, vanilla flavor, or whatever. Okay. But this dessert is so good. The cake itself is sweet. The fruit is free, sweet. So you don't necessarily need to add sugar. But we could have okay. put sugar here. Or you could right. sprinkle it over your fruit. Do you, so that doesn't have sweetener in it? It does not. Oh, okay. Not today it doesn't. Okay. But you can sweeten it according to that. So, so a dessert can be sort of healthy. It That's can great. be healthy <laughs> if you don't do the creme fraiche. <laughs> okay, so Ooh, now what we're going to do is that. come next. We're going to come with your bananas in a minute. Okay, all right. So how do you, are any of these you said are your mothers, your grandmothers, the different branches of your family? All the women in my family, branch of the family, make great pound cakes. And oh. one of my grandsons makes his mother's pound cake. He's so good with that. So our whole family, we can all cook. Men, women, babies, we all cook. And it's like y'all like to cook and eat together. We actually do, on Sunday suppers especially. And we like to, let's go with our bananas. Okay, all right. Is that okay if I just do my fingers right yes, now? Yes, you, you have to. You have okay, to. all right. So I'm going to put this all around? Yes, you do. Okay, all you right. You can kind of just drop them all around. They don't have to be, because you're going to see, it's going to be very pretty. All right, okay. Oh, okay. sorry. That's a little bit, I'm just, this is sort of like... Now let's sprinkle some blueberries across there. Okay. And we'll come back with, with cake. Cream blueberries fresh. across like this? Keep going with that. Okay. We're gonna, you're going to come with your strawberries next. We're going to put cake in next. All right. So strawberries are next? They're next. See, the colors. You want the colors to blend okay. through and look pretty in the punch bowl. <gasps> oh, my gosh. You see, because you see yeah. it from the outside. That's why you do the bowl uh -huh. rather than a, a, you know, a covered dish or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. There's a seven-layer salad that does the same thing, and you do the same thing with all of your vegetables in your salad. And so when you finish it, it it's deep, right? And it's so you... deep, and you just dig in, which we will do in a minute. Okay. I'm going to put one more piece in here. Let's go with the strawberries. Okay. What happens, what, are, what if you don't have a cake? Do you have other alternatives at all that you can use? Sharp bread cookies make really good trifle. Oh, really? It's like a non-cook beyond the cake no, put it right bread here. pudding. Okay. Oh, okay. You want to put a few more over there. All right. It's, it's, it's getting, it's very oh, pretty. I think Isn't it, it gorgeous? Is. Yeah. I like that it's sort of a healthy, you know, you can leave it and... I, we didn't put extra sugar beyond... No. Oh, wow. I'm getting too excited <laughs> here. Okay. Now you have a cookbook and it's coming out when? Well, it's online right now. Okay. And you can find it online, Gigi's Home for the Holidays cookbook. And the print copy Around Thanksgiving, Christmas, you can get it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to... What would be next? Here we go with the pineapple. Okay. Can you do it? Yeah, I can okay. do it. I'm going to use a spoon, if that's okay. Yep. Okay, same idea? Mm-hmm. All right. And um, oh, that's so... That's pretty, see? I know. Now, you can get this... Can y'all see this out here? Doesn't it look pretty? Look at the bowl. Wow, that's you very are, pretty. Gigi, you are quite... I'm here, I'm that's calling you because Gigi. Because I'm semi-artistic, and I like to see pretty things, too, so... Well, you're quite a talented okay. woman. All right. Look at all And we'll this. come back with some more blueberries. Okay, is that enough? Mm-hmm, okay. that's good for now. Okay, and, and what some do you more want blueberries next? and okay. more creme fraiche, because creme fraiche is the last thing on top. Okay. And um, The blueberries really add the dramatic the contrast. Color, too. Yeah, and, and it's the just color. pretty. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Can you open the um, uh, orange peel now? The orange peel, yeah. Because we're going to garnish. You can garnish with anything you want. I have never heard of orange peel before, but it smells great. It does, and it, it always, I put it in savory foods when I'm cooking nutmeg and orange, even in meat dishes and stuff, oh, a really? little sprinkle. Now, yeah. do you have a favorite, like is this your favorite recipe? Or this is you... my favorite hol holiday dessert. Oh, my you know. My absolute favorite. I want to make this. this. This is great. because it's I, not hard to make. It's not. No, and it, I have a gluten-free, so I can see I can make a gluten-free. With a gluten-free pound cake, mm -hmm. or the short, shortbread cookies. Okay, yeah, okay. so now, we're going to sprinkle over. Okay, and I know, oh, 
Is that Just too? a little bit. That's good. You okay. want to put a couple of nuts, either one. We've got walnuts and pecans. Oh, I love pecans. So we'll put that. And you want it over the sure fresh too? Ooh, ooh, Are we not? Yummy, yummy, yummy. Oh yummy. boy, we have some guests here now. <laughs> okay. Is it soup yet? And a sprig of mint. A sprig of mint. Uh -oh. Okay. And then right. it's ready. Well, that's pretty. Mm. And they go with this. That's really Beautiful. pretty. Okay, now let's find okay. out if it tastes as good as it looks. It looks delicious. Look at this, guys. So you, you your family. You want to make one for you and Don? Yeah, oh, make okay. it. Make me a big one. I'll get you one. Make you a big one. Big one, yeah. Mm. We've got four. This, okay. This is, Should this I just is... take this? Maybe. That's, to... That'll do because okay. it's bigger, and you okay. just go down all the way through. Okay. Oh, oh look at that. See. Look at look at there. I says you want two spoonfuls. Don. Gotta have a pound cake. Well, you, you, yeah, that's not big. You if you have but that. that's it. There you go. There is that we it? go. It's a little. We've got it spilling over the side. Sorry about that. And this is one for here. Okay. All right, Jay. I suppose you want to be just like Dawn. No, you want more. <laughs> you bless the food, Lord. Bless in us. It's really good, Lord. Thank oh, you. I it made a delicious. mess again. Sorry. Okay. Here right, we go. Well, How about you, you Alvina? I'm next. Then you're gonna go last. Okay. Yeah, go last. I'm sorry. The last you'll be first. Now should okay. I be waiting? Mm -hmm. Should I be waiting? You can dig in. It's okay. already started. What do you think? Tell what us you? what's the verdict. What's the verdict? That's delicious. Oh, okay. Don't Very you think? Delicious. I think I would like to be at your home, but in a way I can be in your home. In what the she, cookbook, in the cookbook. Scratch and sniff, Q, QR codes. I don't understand that, that, that. What did you say? Scratch, scratch and sniff. Did you grow There's up There's a little it? circle you can scratch in the print book, and it, you can smell the food. Oh did you grow up eat, with this? Is this part of your, your mom's recipe? I found this as a young woman, busy. I was a state legislator doing all that, didn't have time to cook. Somebody told me about a trifle. I started making it, and we have trifle every year. <laughs> oh. Every year. It is really yeah, good. Think. It's very good. Mm. It caught me with mm. a mouthful. You know, it and is you don't miss the sugar, do you? I no, don't. I really don't. I don't because of the the um, sweets. The mm -hmm. Yeah, the mm -hmm. fruit covers it up. Now, um, mm. are you able to give a secret about what Martin Luther King? No, nope, got to get the book. Uh, well, she has so many secrets, though. Let me give a story instead. Okay. I'll go ahead and tell it. Holy okay. Spirit says, let him know. It's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Ghost he is really going to let you know. He really liked collard greens and fried chicken. Mm. Oh, and he loved greens. my mother's sweet potato cobbler. Mm. And with everything that we've had this year and in the past, all the tragedies and the pain and the sorrow, and Lord, we bless everyone who's lost mm -hmm. anyone yeah. Yeah. and Amen. teach us to love each other. So when they would come back running from dogs and guns and billy clubs under the power of the Holy Ghost, mm. we would have different meals. And so one year, Uncle Emil, I think it was 1956, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. had been stabbed in the chest in New York. Mm -hmm. And people know about that. He was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Uncle Emil was such a gentle man and a man of God and a prayerful man that when the lady stabbed him, he says, what did I do? Hmm. So they rush him to the hospital. Their doctor says, if you had sneezed, you would have died. Oh he didn't sneeze and he didn't yell. He prayed. So oh. mother, Aunt Coretta, his wife, is getting ready to get on a plane. Daddy had gotten somebody with a private jet, A.D., my dad. Mm -hmm. And so mom makes a sweet potato cobbler. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Puts it on the plane with Aunt Coretta. Mm -hmm. Mother walks. She's on the phone. Aunt Coretta's walking into the hospital room. Uncle Mel digs into the sweet potato <gasps> pie. In the hospital? And he says, Nene, it's still warm. That's what they call oh my, my mother. God. And mama's in the cookbook, too. She does a recipe in there. So, That's wow. Great. That's the story. Awesome. Thank you Thank so you. much. We, we, we love you, and we're so thankful for our friendship. Thank you for being. Now, I want to tell you in Oregon, God, we trust campaign over here, this camera. Uh, Alveda was key, key to getting our petitions to in front of the president. Mm -hmm. And he, he signed the petitions and declared that weekend a day of prayer and fasting for the 9 11 victims of 9 11. Thank you publicly. I just want to thank you for doing that. Thank you for being an advocate for, for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm in many, many ways. I hope you'll come back here very, very often. You don't always have to cook, but if you want to. I can cook, <laughs> so so to thank you. you. We're so All glad right. you're able to get, get the cookbook and you'll get wonderful recipes plus legacy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Legacy. Amen. God right. works in legacy. Call the number that's on the screen or go to ctvn.org to find out how to get the cookbook. Let's go see what uh, we found in the headlines in the news.
As the U.S. considers declaring Myanmar's actions against Rohingya Muslims as ethnic cleansing, Christians in Southeast Asia continue to support the persecuted group. Believers in Bangladesh and Pakistan have taken a stand for the Rohingyas. The Pakistan Christian League says they are urging world leaders to unite and put an end to the crisis. About half a million Rohingya have fled Myanmar due to the targeted violence against them. Africa's reverse missionaries are bringing Christianity back to the UK. Believers from Nigeria and other African nations are on a mission to spread the gospel across England. Reverse missionaries are evangelists from former mission fields who believe their calling is to spread the gospel to countries that first brought their faith to them. The missionaries go through cross-cultural training to gain a better understanding of their environments. Well, that's all for God in the Headlines. Have a great day on Purpose. My, 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 my. I feel like I got whipped or the cream all over my lips. How but good it that was, stuff tastes. It was really, and I liked that it was easy, but it looked beautiful, you know, so. Yeah, it's very pretty, but it tastes good. Good to try. Good. Very, very, very tasty. Watch out, it, Thanksgiving <laughs> dessert. Here it is. <laughs> I'll well, call it Gigi's Trifle. Gigi's <gasps> there Trifle. There we go. Mm -hmm. well, well, I'm glad that our next guest is with us because he is an internationally known composer and musician who ministers in a very unique way. I saw um, some of the uh, music on YouTube in such a powerful way. So I want to Eric, uh, welcome Eric Genus. So glad you're here, brother. Yes. It's such a delight Thank to you. be here. Now, we're so you, glad brother, you're here. Thank you. you were here as guests of our dear friends at Hosanna House. Yes. And yeah. we're so proud and, and pleased that you were able to squeeze us into your schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, you travel the world. Yes. You're a composer yes. and a music musician. Tell us about how that all started. I'm, I'm really honored to do this. Um, I, I compose music. I've been doing so ever since a child. Mm. And I promised our Lord from the beginning that I would never say no. So I started doing this professionally and performing all over the world maybe 25, 30 years ago. And I play everything from, you know, concert halls to prisons, you know, maximum security prisons. I play for a lot of vet suffering veterans. What I try to do, a big goal, is to try to get my music to those who are forgotten. Mm -hmm. So people that would never have an opportunity, you know, uh, rehab centers, inner city schools, mm -hmm. prisons, and places like that. Well, talk to me about the, the power of music. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think, I think music and art is very sort of underrated. I firmly believe if you give a society beauty, and I think music is a great language of beauty, you give a society beauty, they look at life through the eyes of hope and inspiration mm. and goodness, and you give them, and if you remove that beauty, they look at life through glasses of often destruction and despair, mm -hmm. and that leads to no good. And I see it all the time in these prisons. These prisons harden, harden people whose lives are sort of immersed in ugliness. They react very strong. You put a, a beautiful violinist there, and they react very strongly to the music. And I think we should give the culture this, you know. It, it's, it speaks spiritually to it us. It does. It's like to the depth of it our does. spirit that, it, yeah. that music you know, I just, it inhabits. You know, it's so true, Terry. I was performing in a prison not too long ago, was, and, you know, this one man stood up, and this was in a super maximum security prison, which is one of the toughest places on earth, if you will. And he stood up in the second row and threw up his arms, and he yelled out, I forgot what hope felt like, you know? Oh, nice. Very, very strong use of words. And oh, this, nice. this sort of reaction happens a great deal. And I'm in, like, I get, I get really thousands of letters from prisoners because I offer free CDs to their families. Mm -hmm. And so I get thousands of letters. And sort of the remorse and the pain that they're allowed to express. And thank you, I didn't know this. I think, see, I, I didn't know this side of me kind of expression. Um, beauty uplifts humanity period. Mm -hmm. We've Amen. always known that. Right. Dostoevsky said it'll be beauty that changes the world. It's not just entertainment. It's something, it's a beautiful tool and a wonderful opportunity to uplift people's humanity and how they look at themselves and how they right. look at life. And if you give a culture that, again, it, it sort of sets it above and higher. And so these, these prisoners respond very strongly. But here's one fun story. I was, and they all ask because they never forgive themselves of the deeds they've done, okay. which is a real problem in and of itself. And so, that, you know, the the question that always comes up in, in these prisons is, you know, um, why would you ever come in here and play and sort of 
you know, the interpretation of that is we're ugly. We've done so many horrible things. We don't deserve this. And so I thought I would throw a joke out there. And I said, well, I was on my way to a church and I made a wrong turn and here I am. And, you know, <laughs> and one prisoner calls out, yeah, me too. Oh, <laughs> so anyway. oh. oh wow. Well, so, you, anyway. you're, you're going to play a song for us that has special meaning to you. It does. Tell us a little bit about that. This is uh, of my, my beautiful daughter who's now 13. But when she was born, my daughter has Down syndrome. And, you know, in the eyes of the world, we sort of look at these, at these people as, oh, well, she'll never produce. She's never going to be in the front cover of Vogue magazine, you know. But this girl loves so deeply. And the profound and mystical um, um, dignity of, of the human person is there in her. And she brings such richness. And we didn't think she was going to survive because she was born with a bad heart. So I wrote this piece when, when I was in the waiting room, the five longest hours of my life, oh, when she was, when she was having, being operated on. This is Here I Am. Oh, I can't wait well, to hear it. I, I, yeah, me too. So, Eric, get ready, because we're going to go to Eric as he plays mm -hmm. Here I Am in a way that's really going to move your spirit. So get, get your spirit ready and watch the beauty and listen to the, the majesty of the music. Now be still When your back's against the wall Victory there seems no I'll be your wings that soar so high The sight of paradise Now be still Until you're strong Here I am I'm your fire when it's cold Here I am my hand and shadows hide your way take my hand they'll come a brighter
Do you feel lonely, forgotten, afraid? You are never alone. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Who is our God? Father to the fatherless, defender of widows. This is God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. Know that your life has a purpose. You have meaning and you aren't around by accident. I have called you back from the ends of the earth so you can serve me, for I have chosen you and will not throw you away. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. If you ever feel alone, call our prayer lines. We are always here for you. Know that Jesus is with you wherever you are, and you are loved. Welcome to Real Life Coaching. Prayer is the foundation of our relationship with God. Who better to teach us how to pray than Jesus? Author Tim Cameron is the author of 40 Days Through the Prayers of Jesus. This week, he's teaching us how to really connect to God in a very deep way. So get your pen, get your pad, and let's learn how we can win God's way through Real Life Coaching. Tim, we're here to talk about prayer and the critical nature of prayer and the, and the gift of prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I'm going to leave that into your... Sure. But before you start teaching us about prayer, tell us a little bit about what God's done in your life. Well, a number of years ago, I was in dramatic physical failure. And in the midst of that failure, uh, I was in and out of a wheelchair, thought I was going to die, had a couple of near-death experiences. And this goes on for five or six years. And right in the middle of it, I, I remember prayer I'd made myself as a young man. That I was not going to go into the kingdom of heaven without knowing what it meant to pray. Mm. So I set my mind to pray. I studied prayer and was eventually led to look at the prayers that Jesus prayed in the Gospels. And so that's kind of how this book came about. And I ended up devoting myself to prayer. Was it through that process of learning to pray that you found a way out of where you were? Oh, absolutely it was. I, um, I started just giving myself to prayer. And as I gave myself to prayer, I began to come out of the pain that I was in. I had a horrible chronic pain syndrome. I'd had the people from St. Jude's put a stimulator in my back. I'd had five or six surgeries. And I started to come out of that. I had to do two years of methadone treatment to get off of opiates. Oh, but I started praying and prayer brought me out of that. Well, and that's kind of like, sounds like the last hope. Prayer became your last hope. It, it was, it was my last hope. And I started looking at those prayers of Jesus and I started being healed and found uh, the things that I was always looking for. How can I pray and call down God's blessing upon people's lives? Well, okay, let's get right into it. So what's the, what's the most important thing that you took away from that process? God, you know, Jesus prayed 23 times in the scriptures out loud. And I looked at those in chronological order and the lessons I learned I, f I feel like are profound for all of us to help us to learn how to pray more. Because I really believe we think wrongly about prayer. And that's a profound thing I learned. See, when we pray in the natural, we pray with our mind and we don't pray with our spirit. It says in 1 Corinthians 2, 14, that the natural man doesn't understand the things of the spirit. They are absurd to him. And so, uh, I started looking at the prayers of Jesus. Let's just take the very first one in Mark 1, 35, 37, where it says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up. He left the house. He went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, hey, everyone's looking for you. <laughs> you know, where are you at? I like to call this the Capernaum incident because here's what happened. 
Jesus had gone to Nazareth, uh, his hometown, and they had rejected him. So he picks up a couple of disciples on the way, Simon and Andrew, who are brothers, and then a couple of others. And they, they end up going to Simon and Andrew's hometown, which is Capernaum. And this is a day in the life of Jesus. He goes to Capernaum. He finds, uh, he finds Simon and Andrew's mother who has a terrible fever. She's very sick. He heals her. The word spreads. Jesus stays at that house. And by evening time, it says that all the people in the entire town came to see him and showed up at his doorstep. The entire city. History tells us that was between somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 people. They all show up at his house. He heals them. It's late into the night. And then fast forward it. And in this verse, it says that Jesus went out to pray the next morning, not early, but very early while it was dark. And what we see in Jesus' first prayer that he made a priority to pray. And here's the thing, he had to pray because he was a man. It's something that it's really hard for us to get our arms around that Jesus was a man and he needed to pray. And so here's the, here's the dramatic lesson that why we think wrong about prayer. We think prayer is about getting answers and it is about getting answers. I mean, why pray if you don't, don't get answers to prayer? Why pray? But prayer is first and foremost about relationship. It's about intimacy. Thou, O Lord, does desire truth in the innermost part, in, in my inside of my heart. My, my good friend, Dennis Jernigan, one of the famous worship leaders, uh, always says that intimacy is into me see. God wants to see deeply into my heart. I believe there's two great hindrances to prayer, busyness and worldliness. Busyness steals our time to pray. Worldliness steals our will to pray. If you're too busy to pray, you're too busy to lead a godly life. If you're willfully given to the world, you are not giving your will to pray. I believe that the, the words that we speak that come out of our mouth, the way that we spend our time, all these things reveal what's inside of our soul. They're a window into our soul. This, this picture of Jesus with Capernaum is really important because it shows that he placed a priority on prayer. He had to pray every day because he was a man. It's the first thing he did every morning. We'll see when we talk about prayer that he repeat, repeatedly is giving himself to prayer in the mornings, in the evenings. So there's a couple of things that we don't see the way God sees. One of them is time. When we think about time, we try to squeeze it, we try to save it, we try to do everything we can to get more out of it. God doesn't see time the way that we see it. God has all the time in the world. He wants us to spend time in prayer. See, here's the thing about praying. Prayer is about intimacy again. We've got to keep reminding ourselves. It's about us coming to the Savior and Him allowing us the opportunity to see deeply into Him. He already sees deeply into us, but we've got to devote the time to it. We've got to give time to it, just like Jesus did. That's the lesson He taught. Prayer is about intimacy. It's about God seeing us and allowing us to see Him. So here's the question. Are you available to the Lord? Are you preoccupied with other things? See, we don't think anything about spending time watching the TV, uh, binging on a Netflix, Netflix series on Blue Bloods or something like that. But how many of us can actually set aside 30, 45 minutes to pray? Here's another verse that Jesus, uh, where Jesus was praying in the scriptures, Luke 5, 15 and 16. It says, yet the news about him kept spreading all the more so that the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to a lonely place to pray. He often withdrew. Okay, Luke who wrote this, Luke never met Jesus. He was a physician. He, he came after uh, Jesus' time. So Luke starts out his uh, gospel by saying, O Theophilus, I'm going to write an accurate account of what took place. He goes off and starts interviewing all the people, finding out what Jesus did. And then he makes this profound statement. 
he often withdrew to pray. Prayer was a dramatic priority with Jesus' life. It was his habit. Habits. What are your habits? Is the first thing you have to touch in the morning the newspaper? Is the first thing you touch every morning your iPhone? Is it the last thing you touch at night? Is the first thing you touch in the morning the scriptures? Uh, to turn on worship music? I mean, what comes first in your life? I was a school superintendent for a long time. And to become a school superintendent, there's a lot of all kinds of certifications and things you had to do. But one of the things you had to do was you had to take what they called the inbox test. And the inbox test, they gave you 10 things and you had to prioritize them. Well, hidden in those things was always a safety issue. Safety issues are always the very first thing a school person has to worry about. Is our environment safe? And so you had to figure that out and get that first. Well, that's the way it is with prayer. Prayer is our safety issue. And we've got to get it right that prayer is about how we develop a relationship with God. Back to the two things that we don't see rightly, time and results. We're results driven people. We want to accomplish something. It's why some of the times it's hard for us to get our arms around prayer because when you pray, sometimes you don't see results. Sometimes the prayers don't come for a long time. Let me, let me slow down just for a moment and speak this over our listeners. I want you to listen and hear what I'm going to say now. It says in Revelations 2, 17, 3, 6, and 3, 21, listen with your ears and hear what the Lord is saying. I think the Lord says to us, I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm pleased that you want to know my word. I'm pleased that you want to understand it. I'm pleased that you want to serve me and do things. But I, but I want to know you intimately and personally. It's Psalms 139, 17 and 18, where he says, Oh, how, how vast are my thoughts toward you. If I was to count them, they would uh, outnumber the sands on the seas. And when I wake, my thoughts are still toward you. The Lord wants to know each one of us intimately and personally. Prayer is where we discover Jesus. Prayer is where we discover the Holy Spirit. And let me stop on that just for a second. You know, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is eternal. But the Holy Spirit is a person. When Jesus prayed while he's being baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then he was full of spirit and he went into the desert. We're never going to know the fullness of the Holy Spirit if we don't come and sit down and spend time alone with the Lord in prayer and discover intimacy with him. Be quiet and listen and see what he has to say to us. How, how uh, making me think. <laughs> lots, lots that I want to ask you about, but I want to ask you the simple question. Why do you think it's, because what you say is so true, why is it that it's the hardest thing for Christians to do? I think we haven't been taught to pray. I think it's almost really that simple. And prayer is a whole lot more simpler than we make it. We make it very difficult. Um, I think you've got to believe that prayer is important. You've got to believe that the mo it's the most important thing you'll ever learn. Let me, let me make this statement. I feel like it's pretty profound. I've been an educator for over 40 years. I've worked at the university level. I've worked at the secondary level. I've been an inner city high school principal. Last 15 years, I was a head of school at a very large private school. But I have come to the understanding that prayer is the most important thing you'll ever learn. It's not how to do an Excel spreadsheet. It's not how to do a, a problem in physics so you can do mechanical engineering. The most important thing you'll ever learn is how to pray. And the Lord wants to teach you to pray through his prayers. He's the great teacher on prayer. He will teach you if you'll come and be quiet and be still before him. So God's not restricting us. He doesn't have a certain language he wants us to speak or a certain format that he wants us to talk in. And we don't have to pray the King James Version of the Bible. <laughs> you just, just have to come before him. We just have to come and present ourselves to him. And I really believe that that is, is where the Lord takes us. He takes us to a place of intimacy. Well, Tim, I'm thankful for this book, 40 Days 
through the prayers of Jesus. And you heard his testimony that it was from a broken position, even a life and death position that this book was birthed from. And he wrote it from that place. And that was how the Lord brought him out into a place of healing and into a place of abundance. So Tim has made this book available to us in our Cornerstone family, and I'm so thankful for that. And then he's also done with us something very special, is created a teaching about the book, 40 Days of uh, Through the Prayers of Jesus, on DVD, which is a teaching of about an hour's worth of content that you can't get anywhere else. So it's not available anywhere else. So the book and the DVD together make for a strong step towards learning how to be intimate with God. And with your gift to the ministry of $30, we want to send it to you. We're going to rush it right off to you. We'll take care of the shipping and the handling and get it into your life. Because Tim, I agree with you. The most important step we can take is to activate our prayer life. Amen. Amen. Because if we keep it in the place that we are now, then we're going to keep getting what we got. <laughs> and that's a hope, but without much faith. Amen. The faith Amen. has to come alive. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And this is, the Word of God is the spoken revelation, the rhema of God. And that's what Tim is delivering to us. I'm so thankful for that, brother. Thank you. You're going to be with us all week long. And tomorrow, as we, as we get deeper into, uh, into the teaching, we're going to find out some more specific things about prayer and why there's a secret to prayer. We'll talk about that in tomorrow's program so you don't want to miss it. But again, call the number on the screen and get the book and the DVD for your own personal library so that you can grow up in your faith. And you know when you walk in faith, when you step out in faith, God always meets us there. He always meets us. Mm -hmm. And when He meets us, something supernatural happens. We're going to tell, hear a story right now of one of those supernatural encounters. Timing. It's one of the most important concepts that God continues to deliver upon for us. I was feeling down and depressed when God's impeccable timing intervened. You see, a few years ago, I received some concerning news from the doctor. One day, I was burdened so much by the devastating news that I had to pull off the road. I couldn't focus, and I was about to lose it. Then, all of a sudden, my phone began to ring. I didn't feel like answering it at first, but something told me I should. It turned out that it was one of the kind and caring prayer partners from Cornerstone. She called me to thank me for sending in my most recent gift and to ask me if I had any prayer requests. Right then and there, I immediately felt God's presence as I prayed with this wonderful prayer warrior. As a result of her praying with me, I received a miraculous healing. Praise God! and thank you Cornerstone for your incredibly uplifting prayer ministry. God used your ministry, along with his perfect timing, to heal me and to make my life new again. We're here in Real Life Coaching and uh, we just had a, a wonderful teaching on prayer and I'm so glad that Terry, my wife Terry and Pastor Jay are here with me to talk about that teaching about how important it is to engage God in, in a personal and intimate way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I like what he said. Uh, the two greatest hindrances of prayer are busyness and worldliness. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that, the reason why worldliness is such a hindrance is because if we're so consumed with the world, 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, mm -hmm. the love of the Father isn't in us. Prayer is a fire. And when that fire goes out, the, the passion for prayer, the will to pray isn't there. So we have to keep ourselves not busy mm -hmm. and keep God a priority and tainted, untainted from the world. So what do you mean by worldliness? Do you think that you're supposed to just totally be set apart from worldliness? Like, but we live in the world. So how do we find that, that you know, where we're in the world but not of the world? And how does it not imp impact us? It's a personal walk. Mm -hmm. You have to determine, you have to know your own fire. And when you start developing a fire for God, you'll sense certain things that come into your life 
that dwindle that fire. Mm. So every person is different. It just depends on mm. what things fan the flame of God in your life and okay. what things extinguish it. And when you find that out, that's what you stay away from those things and embrace the things that cause your fire for God to burn. And that's what we need to focus on, how to fan the fire. How to fan the fire. Well, one that way to fan a fire is studying <laughs> and understanding. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just not going to happen. Brother and sister, listen. Listen to me very closely. It's just not going to happen unless you make it happen. You've got to step out in faith. You've got to engage with God. God's here. You say, I'm waiting for God to move. No, no, we're not waiting for God. He's waiting on us. Mm -hmm. He's waiting on us. And that's what this book is all about. 40 days through the life, through the prayers of Jesus. Who's a better one to teach us how to pray than Jesus? Amen. That's true. He, the, the one who said, I don't do anything unless I first saw the Father do it. I don't say anything unless I first heard the Father say it. So with your gift to the ministry of $30 or more, we're going to give you this hardback, tremendous book, mm -hmm. and a DVD that Tim has created specifically for us that goes into the deeper waters of prayer, mm -hmm. into the deeper waters of prayer. You know, what, he, what he's teaching, he's with us all this week, but I want you to get the, the book today. Call us on the number on the screen so you can put this in, in play. I'm going to tell you this. Unless we activate our prayer life, our spiritual life will be cold. Amen. You can study the Bible in the original language. You can master the, the Koine Greek and be able to speak it and parse the words, Pastor, and, and break it down and understand it at, at, at the most intellectual level and still be not a, a walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. So you would say that prayer is the most important thing to know. I mean, that's what he was saying. Well, if you model what Jesus did, yeah. Jesus prayed. Mm -hmm. And they say, if anybody needed to pray to Jesus, he and God were one. But still he prayed. Still he went to the Father and he'd get up in the early mornings and have that, that time with the, the Father to learn the ways of God to learn his way. How did he do that? Through his intimate interaction with God. Amen. Why, why don't we not know that? I mean, I want to know that more in my own life. I take this to heart and brother, I'm telling you, these things mean a lot to me personally. I want to be uh, more connected to God because prayer is misunderstood. Pastor, prayer is very misunderstood. If I, even, I've misunderstood prayer. I've seen prayer uh, from a perspective of me just telling God what I need. Here's my prayer list, you know, but that's not prayer at all. No, I think prayer is more of not what you say to God, but what he says to you. Jesus gave us the, the Lord's prayer and he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The whole purpose of prayer is to get along with God and let him download into your spirit. We spend a lot of time praying about things that God's already fixed. But there are certain things that need to be done in the earth that he needs to get our attention. And we set ourselves aside and we sit alone with him. He mm -hmm. downloads his presence into our life. Mm -hmm. The fruit of the spirit comes out of our life. We have more peace. We have more joy. Prayer is the lifeline for the believer. Mm. Well, and also is the Lord, as we draw closer to him, he knows all about us, but we get to learn more about him too. I love that relationship. Well, Don, why is it that we feel we need to tell God what he already knows? Well, that's, mm -hmm. it's always, that was my big wrestling match about prayer mm -hmm. when I first got saved. I said, why am I going to tell God anything? Right. Because yeah. he's God. That's true. I mean, he already knows everything. He knows all the details. He knows everything I did. He knows everything I'm going to do. So what am I going to him to tell him? What am I informing? See, that was my bad thinking. I was going to inform God of something. That's not what prayer is at all. It's not no. me telling God, it's God telling me. Hmm. And, and, and many times in the, what the Spirit has shown me is I don't pray for uh, God's benefit, I pray for my benefit. I'm praying for my benefit. I'm praying for my family's benefit. I'm praying so I can change my mind, rearrange my thinking, get my brain rewired to the Spirit and not to the natural. And that's why this teaching is so powerful. Uh, Tim, Tim is such a wonderful teacher. Yeah. I want to tell you again, this book, 40 Days Through the Prayers of Jesus, how to pray like Jesus and how to get the results that Jesus got. Now that's, that, that's tremendous on its own, but he's also created this DVD that is only for the Cornerstone family. So you can't get this on Amazon. This is only here and we're going to give it to you as your, your gift to the ministry of $30 or more. Why do we give, why do we ask for your gift? So you can help fund the ministry. Mm -hmm. So you can help take the gospel out. 
because it, it, it takes an investment to take the gospel out. So that's why this is a win-win. We want you to have the material so your spiritual life will grow, and we want you to help join in as our partner to take the gospel out to the world. You know, Tim's with us all this week. He's going to talk tomorrow about this thing that's the secret of prayer. Well, you know, can you give us a... No, no, <laughs> okay. no hint. Tune in tomorrow. Tune no hint. hint. Well, you know, I, do you think, well, then I'm just going to guess. I mean, he, he laid the foundation for prayer and the importance of prayer. Do you feel that we shouldn't pray for our needs? We should just pray the prayers of Jesus? Do we pray what to know God better? Well, what's the... It's, what's the, what's, it's the heart mm -hmm. of the prayer not the script of the prayer. Okay. I believe when we pray, and, and for those of you who understand what I'm going to say, this is very critical. When you pray in the spirit, you pray in the spirit, you're praying mysteries, the Bible says. You're praying the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. So praying in the spirit is critical. There's other practical ways. The word breaks down prayer and gives us mm -hmm. different ways, petitions and, and, and prayers of, uh, of request and prayers of praise and worship. There, God has all kinds of ways that we connect with Him. And you're saying the Word meaning in the Bible, right? Isn't that what you were just saying? In the Word, it tells you all the, the Bible. different... Yeah, yeah the, in Bible. the Bible. Whenever right. I say the Word, the, mm -hmm. the, the Word, the Word. Whenever I say the Word, the Word, the word. I'm talking about the Word. I'm the talking, Bible. <laughs> talking about the Bible <laughs> is, is, is the Word. That's good because some people may not know That's what right. I'm talking and about. It, and I want, to, I want to encourage folks that... Really, it's like having a conversation with the Lord too. You know how the three of us are, are talking? It's one-on-one -on -one with Him. And, and so I know some of you aren't used to praying and you're not used to even talking to God. And that's where, you know, you have to make that first choice just to say, I can pray and I can talk. I don't need to have somebody helping me. I can do this by myself. Let me, let me just say it this mm -hmm. way. This is what God's revealed to me. You'll never be all God wants you to be without prayer. Without the power of prayer in your life, you will not be the woman or the man God wants you to be. You'll not do what he wants you to do. You won't be the mom or the wife or the husband or the grandfather or father that he wants you to be. You won't be the business owner or, or, or professional that he wants you to be. Without prayer, it is impossible for you to rise up to the call mm -hmm. and to the potential. Prayer unlocks potential, Pastor. Prayer turns the key of potential and makes it into opportunity. Amen. Yes, it does. And, you know, going back to what she said, too, about prayer, you know, Matthew 6 is a great passage of Scripture to study because he goes through and gives us the Lord's Prayer, but then he talks about what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? Where are we going to sleep? He said, after all those things the Gentiles seek, seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Prayer brings addition into your life. Well, exactly. Amen. Exactly. Well, get the book, mm -hmm. 40 Days Through the Prayers of Jesus and the DVD. Great we'll get, teaching. We're going to put this in your, in your hands for your gift of $30 or more. We'll, we'll pay for the shipping. We'll get it out to you as quickly as possible. You know, just think about it like this, guys. Think that we have this privilege of closing our eyes, not even closing our eyes, but just directing our attention to the creator of the universe mm -hmm. and that he'll pay, he'll pay attention to us. And not only will we pay attention to us, he'll act upon our, our request by faith. Amen. I mean, let that sink in to what I just said, the creator of the universe. Well, this is our season for prayer here in our program. Every day we come together, we create this, this opportunity to find real answers for real life. And we always close with prayer. And these, these uh, pieces of paper represent people who have called in with specific prayers. And I just want to stretch your hand out with us for home and let's pray in agreement. Father, we thank you, God, yes. that you are the Alpha and the Omega, Amen. God. We thank you, Lord, that you have created all things. And Lord, we thank you that we can come into your presence with just boldness and faith to know that you hear us. Stone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.